Most of us have our intellectual strengths and weaknesses. I, for one, take a bit of pride in the fact that I have a pretty big vocabulary. A propensity for verbosity, if you will. I do try to keep it in check, though. I feel like this is best practice for those with a penchant for extravagant articulation, as failing to do so will often lead to finding oneself on the inside of a locker with no lunch money. It is a bit frustrating at times, though. I try not to sound like the sorest when I speak, but occasionally an egregious or a suboptimal will slip out. And then the person to whom I'm speaking will look at me as if I were speaking Spanish or something. Like, Jesus Christo, dude, these words are in the English language. Please, I beg you, read a book. There's an excellent one about a cat and his hat that I think would be right about at your level. But I try not to hold it against people when they're confused by my language. I get it. I like words. I know a lot of them. Probably at least like 50, maybe even more. You don't have to like words, though. You can like history. I don't know shit about history. When did the War of 1812 happen? No idea. As much as the glassy-eyed gaze that often accompanies uncommon utterances is irksome, what really gets under my skin is when people bitch about swearing. They'll clutch their pearls and implore you to think of their children if their ears catch but a hint of a fuck or a shit or a cunt. This reaction is cringy, but understandable. Some people simply have a low linguistic fortitude. What is surely the most vile indication of idiocy is when people say that swearing makes you sound dumb. I take significant umbrage with such a statement and would reply thusly to this, the most heinous of falsehoods. To claim obscenities offer nothing in the way of indications of cognitive capability is simply a name prattle. The designation of diction is singular in its purpose, and its purpose is thus the alacritous conveyance of thought. Such a conveyance is undeterred, and often even bolstered by the moral standing, or lack thereof, the mechanisms of expression, you stupid fucking cunt. To translate, for those of you unacquainted with the headwear preferences of felines, I don't like that load of malarkey. Swearing doesn't make you sound dumb. Saying that is dumb. Words are meant to say what you think. Sometimes swearing even makes what you're saying better. You stupid fucking cunt. I really do love a good swear though. Regardless of circumstance, I feel any conversation is made better through the addition of a curse word. You stub your toe. God damn it! And lo, the toe hath all but healed itself. Someone cuts you off in traffic. Fuck you, you stupid fucking hick. And lo, the hick is incited into such a frenzied state of impotence, wishing with all his might for the chance to shove you into a nearby locker, but knowing he cannot, lest he total his F-350. At a parent-teacher conference, I don't give a fuck that my kid ate the damn goldfish. Maybe if this piece of shit school fed him properly at lunch, we wouldn't be in this fucking situation. And lo, you are relieved of the responsibility of ever again attending a parent-teacher conference. As exhilarating a thrill it is to cuss out a deserving roadmate or school teacher, there's also something to be said for the practice of exercising restraint in regards to offensive language. Henry Rollins once said something to that effect. That guy knows his shit. He was in Black Flag. His premise is as such. If one only swears in a moment where such a phrase would be optimally effective, such a word carries more weight than if it were to be bandied about with zero regard. While I don't always abide by such practices, I can respect them. Imagine you're a bored kid on a rainy day when all of a sudden this anthropomorphic cat does a home invasion. You are taken aback, but you're just a kid. You are ill-equipped to deal with the situation. This cat is running rampant through your house. He's juggling everything you own, inviting his friends over, and upsetting your fish. Eventually, you've put up with his flagrant destruction of property and tell the cat, Fuck off! My mom is coming home and she'll skin us both alive if the house looks like this when she gets back. And the cat, shocked by your sudden use of profanity, promptly obliges. He indeed fucks off, but your house is still a wreck. But then what happens? The cat is so inspired by the fact that you finally grew a spine and used a big boy word that he comes back and cleans your house allowing you to remain unflayed by your mother. Words are fun, even the naughty ones. Not like history, though. That shit is useless. I'm pretty sure that's like a Churchill quote or something. He said it, like, right before he invaded Vietnam. 